I got two factors. If I put the factor x minus 2, the interesting point is when x is positive 2, this will be negative until I get to 2, then 0, then positive. x plus 2, this will be negative until I get to negative 2, then 0, then positive. Which means my whole graph, my entire f of x, To the left of negative 2, I have a negative divided by a negative. That gives me a positive. Then I have a 0 in my denominator, so that's where my asymptote is. Then I have a negative divided by a positive until I get all the way to 2. What does that give me? Then I have a 0 in the top. Then I have a positive divided by a positive. Do we have enough information to graph this? Okay. Stay with me. we got one more of these to do. Wait, why isn't 2 an asymptote? Okay, why isn't 2 an asymptote? Is this, uh, this 2 represents where x minus 2 is equal to 0, okay? x minus 2 is in my denominator. A 0 on top just means 0. Uh, 0 on the bottom means an asymptote. Is that the numerator Yes, and this is a yes. So I have a 0 here at 2 in my numerator. You just push there. I apologize for that. You get what I mean, though? Zero on top, no, big, no nothing to worry about, just a zero, zero on the bottom, asymptote. That's the important part. Okay, got enough information to graph it now. I'm going to start with my asymptotes. Uh, y equals negative 1 was an asymptote? No. Y equals positive 1 was an asymptote. Y equals negative 1 was my intercept. Y equals negative 1 was my intercept. X-intercept at positive 2 and a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Okay, over here, it has to be positive, and it has to snuggle up to each of these asymptotes. To me, that strongly suggests that shape. Would you agree? Yeah. Please double check me. Okay, now, it's got to snuggle up to this asymptote on the right and be negative. I would say that means it's heading up like that to its y-intercept. Does that make sense? Yeah. These expressions don't tend to do a lot in between their x and y uh, intercepts, so I think it's just going to keep on like that. And it's going to stay negative until it gets to 2, and then it changes to positive, which makes sense, because now it has to snuggle up to this asymptote. This is the shape that I would put a little bit of money on this graph looking like. For your homework, sure. On, the, on at least some of the questions on the next test, you won't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. You have to have confidence in your logic Ew. skills. I live to slightly disappoint you, Adina. Remember, this was the original question. Are we done? Now, I got one more. How many of these uh, do you think you'll be able to do on a test? One. Zero. <laughs> like, like Maybe, I, could do I think we're gonna. Like, you can give us like five or something. You should give us Not like one. I'll probably give you like two to maybe either two or three one. to graph, depending on how hard they are, and then maybe a couple others to answer questions about, like just what are the asymptotes, what's the domain, that sort of thing. Okay, I got one more of these. One more, and then we're done. She sounds so hopeful. Because it's Friday. It's Friday. I want to go home. It's last Relax. It's nothing against the class. I actually might have, I might have two more quick ones. I got one more quick thing to show you and then one more long one. Okay, James, run back this way. Okay. Okay. I'll show you how to do this type of one. If I tell you that f of x equals 3x minus 7 over x minus 2, okay? There's a couple ways to do this. Here's another alternative. Your homework asks you to try this tonight. It's good practice. I probably won't make you do it on a test, but you may want to. 
I'm just going to go through the transformation here. I can do this as a, what I can do is I make this a long division problem if I feel like it, and it's not a very long one. What do I multiply? Three. Three. Drew's ahead of me. Yeah, Drew. And I distribute this, and I get 3x minus 6. I get one, negative seven, yeah, minus, one. minus, minus, yeah, one. one. So I can pretty quickly say, okay. Negative one, you get a negative one. one. Negative it is a negative one, thank you. So I can change this to say that this is three plus, not, uh, I'm stuck on the plus. Three minus one over x minus two, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this, I can rewrite this as negative one minus, uh, over x minus 2, plus 3, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that looks like uh, Hey, that's that thing and it's saying. Yep. If you want to think of, remember I used that as terms parent and offspring functions at the beginning of the year? Yeah. If you want to think of y equals 1 over x as the parent function, and it looks like this, the differences here are it's been shifted counterintuitively two units to the right, intuitively three units up, and this negative on the outside flips the whole thing around the x-axis. So what I can do is I can say, okay, my new asymptotes, instead of my asymptotes being the x and the y-axis, my new asymptotes are, there's one over here at x equals two, there's one up here at x minus three, and because it's negative, these things have switched sides. Minus three or plus three? Yeah, plus three. Yeah. That was a positive three, so we're going to be positive at the end. I don't apologize. I'm getting all of those backwards verbally today. Wait, so a negative, uh, like, what is the, the, the uh... Negative coefficient negative. at the beginning? Yeah, even though that's negative, it doesn't, doesn't change? It doesn't change a thing about the plus three. Yeah. It does flip these two things around their asymptotes. At any rate, you get the idea. So this may be fast. This may be a faster way to graph this, or you could just say, okay, leading coefficient. Uh, leading coefficients are three and one. Asymptotes are three. Vertical asymptotes are two because of the zero on the bottom. You have another choice. Okay, you can do the long division there, and that segues nicely into slant, uh, a slant asymptote example. These are fun. May I erase this one yet? Yeah. Okay. The big thing is, can you switch it from here to here if you want to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. I'm going to download that onto the, the homework chart thing tonight, right? Or sometime this weekend? Sometime this weekend, definitely. Okay. Sometime this weekend, definitely. i got to bring the camera home to do it. erase it. Okay. Now, um, we found a really good slant that's the one. Would you just find it okay? That's a good one. Oh, that's a very good one. Okay. F of x equals. This is a good one for people who know how to factor. I don't know how to factor. This will be a good one for you then. Ha. Plus x minus 6 over x minus 3. Okay. Do we have the slant asymptote situation here where we have one degree higher on the top? Yeah. Okay. Um, Actually, do we have to slant that? Incidentally, this one breaks down to x plus 3, x minus 2. Be very careful here. It would be very easily to make a mistake factoring this one and get an x minus 3 plus 2 on the top and then accidentally cross it out and put in a buttonhole, removable discontinuity, instead of what you're supposed to do with it. Okay. If you see one degree higher, you're supposed to do the either the synthetic division or the polynomial long division. Since we have a linear term on the bottom, I'm going to do the synthetic division with 3, 1, 1, negative 6. Bring down the 1. 3 times 1 is 3. 4. Uh, 12. 6.